Hi everyone, welcome and hello and I hope you are well and I hope wherever you are the weather is warming up just a little bit. It's starting to warm up a little bit where I am and uh, in fact it, I woke up to a very warm and clear blue skies morning today and it felt like the perfect time to make a spring TBR. I know I may be a little bit premature but I do think of March, April, and May being the springtime so this felt uh, it felt like the moment, so I have compiled a few books that I want to read during the next few months. Um, these kind of quarterly TBRs work best for me. I don't always, uh, I'm not always super strict on, like, consistent in making them. I'm even less consistent in making them into videos, but I thought it would be fun for today. Um, I'm going to share with you the five categories that I have books that I am choosing from. I should also preface, these are not all of the books that I'm going to read in the next three months. These are just a handful that I want to put, um, excuse me, <laughs> I want to put on a priority that I want to get to. Um, so there are five categories. So first I'm choosing from my unread physical TBR, which is uh, one of my 2021 goals. If you watched my 2021 planning and goals video, you know that that's one of my biggest goals is to read all of the physical books that I own. I don't have very many, but I'm just making my way through that list. My second category is books from my long-term TBR, books that have been on my TBR for a really long time. The third category is a recent release category. The fourth is my mood reading, some books that I'm in the mood for. And then fifth is nonfiction. So I just have one or two books in each of these categories. The first book that I have to share from my physical TBR is The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I had wanted to kind of get to this in February in Black History Month, but um, I didn't manage to do so. So I'm hoping to relatively soon be able to read The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I know a little bit of what this is about because I saw the Broadway musical a few years ago with Cynthia, Cynthia Ira, Ivero. Gosh, I can't remember how to pronounce her name. I can kind of see it in my head. It has an E and a V and an O. Um, she's amazing. I would definitely recommend looking up the uh, soundtrack from that musical. It's just breathtaking. Um, but what I remember from that is that it's about um, it's about Seely and Nettie. It's a lot about um, sort of these abusive female or like gender dynamics um, that these that these women experience. If I'm remembering correctly, that's really kind of off the top of my head. Um, and anyway, I am really looking forward to this one. I also picked it because it is the shortest book on my physical TBR and I expect the next few months will be really busy. Very tentatively, I'm going to add a second book to this category. I, I am highly I highly suspect that I won't actually have time to get to this one, but if I am able to read a second book for my physical, physical TBR this quarter, it will be Valette by Charlotte Bronte. Moving on to my long-term TBR, I'm embarrassed to even put these up because some of you guys have seen these so many times and I still haven't read them. Hopefully this will be the last time you see them, or rather the second to last time, and in a wrap-up, a soon to be had wrap up you will see them again and then we'll be done with it. The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Um, this was really popular when I first found booktube in like 2018 I think. Um, it was published in 2016 or 2017. I th anyway that's it's 2016 and this is a historical fiction novel taking place in London in 1893 or in England. Um, I don't know if it all stays in London. Anyway, this has heard it praised for its great writing and it's just always sounded like something that would be in my wheelhouse of interest. Um, I think that my taste may have evolved a bit since I first put this on my TBR. Um, I think it's still really, really worth a chance, but I'm interested to see if I do end up enjoying it as much as I've always thought that I would, or if it will end up being a little bit of a letdown. I'm not helping myself by building up the anticipation so much, but I do hope to get to this one very soon. In fact, it's on a pretty high priority list. I almost picked it up the other day because I, I want to stop dragging this out. Anyway, um, I next also have Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This takes place in Iceland and is about a woman who is, I believe she's convicted of a crime and is awaiting execution. Um, and I don't even remember anything other than that. I don't know what goes from there, where it goes from there, but 
Um, I do remember I started this book and read the first like 20 pages or so and I was getting on with it. I, I cannot remember why I didn't finish it, but um, those are the two from my long-term TBR that I'm really hoping to get to very soon. Um, let's next move on to uh, a contemporary release and I'm taking a real gamble with this one. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it because well, let me just show you what it is. Um, the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. E. Schwab. I think I'm going to regret this, but I really, really want to like it. This is about, this book is about um, a woman who doesn't age. Somehow, somehow she makes a deal with the devil or something, and she is able to not get older, um, but in exchange for this, everyone she ever meets forgets her. And, um, like, if they look away from her for a minute, they forget who she is. And then one day, I think in the content, like, in our contemporary world, she meets someone who doesn't forget her. And it's meant to be a really, really great romance, I think. Um, this, gosh, I've just heard so many people rambling on about this and there are people that I haven't vetted their taste and so I think there's a good chance that I end up won't jiving with this book but everything I hear about it I want to like about it and I also have so much like academic reading I'm doing that I kind of have wanted a real just like pure escapism book to have on my docket ready for when I need it um, and I'm hoping that this book can be that for me. If you have encountered this book let me know what you think, especially if you're familiar with my taste. Maybe it's not worth my time. I already have it out from the library, so I'll probably give it a chance anyway. But I'm hoping that this one, I can report back favorably on it. I want to give it a good, honest go. Um, but I am nervous <laughs> about, about it. I'm really picky about books sort of that are um, like romance or plot based. But I also love it when a book in that genre, I do end up liking it. So anyway, moving on to category four and books that I'm in the mood for right now. I am in a bit of a modernist mood, actually. This has been um, subtly driven and provoked by my master's program that I'm in. I um, like both last semester and this semester, there are quite a few modern works that we're reading. Um, but independent of that, I've also been picking up some modernist works that are just um, I guess I'm also, it's all sort of resonating and making me realize that I quite enjoy this genre um, and I feel a strong desire to be better read in it. So I just have a few more works that I'm sort of supplementing in. Um, one is A Woman of No Importance by Oscar Wilde. This is a play and um, I don't know much of what it's about. It's very short so I kind of didn't want to know what much of what it's about because I feel like short books are maybe better to go into without <laughs> knowing anything because it's so easy to to give the whole book away, I suppose. Um, but I know it involves a, an interesting female character. It's all about the London social scene and has interesting gender commentary is the gist that I have from this book. Um, I've, I have read A Picture of Dorian Gray also by Oscar Wilde and I really enjoyed that. Um, I appreciate his writing style, and because I enjoyed The Picture of Dorian Gray, I really wanted to pick another, another work by this author. I would also like to pick up Orlando by Virginia Woolf. I have read another book by her. I read uh, Mrs. Dalloway. It was very difficult. I read it about three years ago, and I found her stream of consciousness writing really, really hard. Um, I think that was probably one of the first just like straight-on hardcore modernist novels I ever read. Um, and I think it was really good for me uh, as a reader to like push me as a reader. Um, and ever since then I felt sort of like not up for the challenge of trying to read her again. Um, but I am. I really, I really want to try. And I've heard that this book also has really interesting conversations around gender. I then also have, I want to read a third book in this category and I want to read either Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad or As I Lay Dying by Faulkner. Faulkner. I can't remember his first name. <laughs> William Faulkner? I've heard both of these are very difficult. If you have read either or both of them, you can let me know, um, which is why I've put one or the other. But I, uh, is my impression that these are 
two of the most uh, like foundational works of the genre. And so in an effort to feel a little bit more well-versed in the genre as a whole, I think it would be really good for me to read one of these. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that actually. Um, I, I'm very curious to see how I get on with it, if I end this quarter feeling sick of modernist work or if I will discover that I have found a new favorite genre. For the fifth and last category, nonfiction, I have two books I want to read, Simulacra and Simulation by Jean Baudelard. Baudelard, I feel like I can never get his name quite right. Um, he is a philosopher and this is a philosophy book. It's about a theory that the author puts forward. The author discusses the relationship between reality and symbols and society and the way that we interact with these things in terms of simulation. Um, it, I'm familiar with this theory in relation to art in during my undergrad in art history, but I, um, I haven't really familiarized myself with the theory beyond that, but it's always interested me a little bit, um, and this book caught my eye recently, and I just really felt like I wanted to revisit it a bit more. I also think it's relevant to some of the things I'm studying right now, so um, I'm hoping to apply it there. I also want to read Night by Ellie Weisel. This is a memoir of the author's experience. He was a child uh, in Nazi Germany when he was taken to Auschwitz, and um, most or all of his family, I believe, did not survive that experience. I think that this will be not a very pleasant experience to read, but it's one that I've wanted to read for quite a while. Um, it's a classic. This book, uh, well, the author is the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, um, and this is just considered a classic. I think it'll be a really great book for me to read as well. Um, that's everything. That's all of the books. I really hope that I can get to these because they all sound very interesting and I would love to pick all of them up right now. Um, anyway, if you want to read any of these or if you have, uh, please share your thoughts down below, especially on any of the uh, modern books. Am I too ambitious for wanting to read them right now? Um, we'll see. But anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it and I hope you have a really wonderful day and I'll see you in another video. Bye!